Okay, so this, these uh, mini talks are arranged uh, in a smart way chronologically. So now we're going to go uh, from the hardware to uh, the middleware. Uh, in between, bridging the gap between uh, algorithms and hardware you actually have access to uh, today. So um, for that, I want to consider the state of uh, current hardware. And um, so everyone knows that current hardware has too many qubits, right? At least relative to uh, existing error rates. So as we've heard today, the world record for quantum volume corresponds to like 16 qubits, but we have devices which are like 10 to 100, tens to hundreds of qubits. So you have these... Uh, many, many qubits, and you can't make use of them unless you handle errors. So the limit, limiting factor today is indeed uh, two qubit gate infidelity. If you try to error correct uh, current hardware, you get very few logical qubits, at best not to mention uh, really uh, uh, important challenges that we heard about uh, this morning. Uh, so the, the uh, current uh, solution that we believe in, along with a chunk of this industry, as we've heard today, is uh, error mitigation. So basically, with error mitigation, every uh, physical qubit corresponds to a logical qubit, and the overhead you pay is in QPU time. Okay? So the question is just how long are you willing to wait, and is it worth the wait, okay? compared to uh, uh, competing strategies that you can uh, use, for example, classical simulation. And uh, additionally, as we've heard in the previous uh, talk, we can also smoothen the transition to error correction with error mitigation. Um, so this is what we're doing at Kedma. This is a product we're uh, developing. Let me tell you a bit about the company. So we have this uh, nice uh, trio of founders. Dorit and Netanel uh, will be here uh, most of the week. I'll be here, or you'll be here. Uh, Eyal is here today. And a, a bunch of our colleagues are here. Uh, come talk to us after this session or throughout the week. Um, in terms of the quantum computing stack, as I said, we uh, sit kind of uh, nicely in the middle between uh, the hardware and the uh, quantum algorithms at the top. And you need to do a lot of work uh, today to basically try to bridge this gap, right? And uh, we do this at various uh, steps that I'll tell you about, including uh, calibration of gates, which I won't talk about, characterization, error suppression, and mitigation, as well as, of course, compilation and optimizing the algorithm you eventually want to run to the entire stack that sits below. Um, right, so uh, our bread and butter in Kedma is really uh, characterization. We like errors. We like to characterize them uh, with high accuracy uh, in detail, and we like to do it in a scalable uh, manner. So what I'm showing you here is uh, snapshots of uh, a characterization product that we developed for hardware manufacturers. So this is the most detailed uh, thing we have in our arsenal in terms of characterization. It tells you everything uh, you want to know. Coherent errors, dissipative errors, crosstalk, uh, non-Markovian errors, everything uh, with high uh, state-of-the-art resolution to uh, uh, runtime. And everything is scalable. Uh, apart from this uh, very detailed uh, protocol, we also have uh, protocols that are uh, specifically made for uh, error suppression and error mitigation. So they uh, extract exactly what you need for each of these tasks. And this is important um, uh, to do. So given these, uh, this uh, suit of characterization protocols, uh, let me show you what we can do, starting with error suppression. Uh, this is a good point to thank I IBM for hardware access, uh, with which experiments I'll show you uh, would not be possible. So this is uh, an error suppression experiment for a uh, swap gate compiled using three CNL gates. This is the bare infidelity of this gate as we characterize it. Here you see a breakdown of the coherent errors. These coherent errors uh, comprise uh, an important piece of the infidelity, though not the leading piece. Okay? So this is a dissipative contribution to the infidelity. Here you see the coherent contribution. And with error suppression, we essentially uh, characterize in, high, in great detail, in a lot of detail, and in a high resolution, these errors and essentially invert them. Once we invert them, as you can see, we can essentially eliminate the entire coherent contribution, leaving a purely dissipative gate. Okay? And this is the idea of error suppression in general. And this is, so, so this is resource uh, free. It's just this one uh, swap gate, this one subcircuit. You replace it by some other subcircuit. It costs nothing, okay? apart from the characterization, which is very fast. If you want to eliminate this uh, dissipative contribution, you have to pay. And you, ha you have to choose your resource. As I said earlier, uh, we go for error mitigation today, and the resource is, resource is QPU time. Okay? The other qubits are in there. You can make use of them. It doesn't matter, right? You pay for the QPU time today. So that's the resource that you should care about. And um, our general error mitigation uh, scheme is as follows. So you have some ideal circuit that you want to run on n qubits. You uh, characterize errors uh, in the ingredients in this, um, in this uh, circuit, and you compile the circuit to a set of circuits on roughly the same number of qubits. Okay? As I said, it doesn't really matter how many qubits you use. They're all in there. You, they are free to use. What matters is the QPU time. And uh, you, you extract the output. 
and uh, you do some classical post-processing and, uh, and get an unbiased output. I'm highlighting here unbiased because it's important, right? Once we get to these large volumes, we need a guarantee. So uh, we heard a lot about these heuristic methods, which sometimes work amazingly well, sometimes not so much. And we need to, I think, work hard as we go to these larger volumes. We need some guarantee for the method. Uh, so the goal here is to get an accurate, unbiased result with the minimal QPU time, okay? Starting from this detailed characterization and going to an output that uh, looks like this. So this is a simple experiment on, on four qubits, uh, some uh, trotterization of the uh, Ising Hamiltonian going up to um, 30 trotter steps. Uh, the noisy data, as you see, uh, decays exponentially, which is not surprising. And uh, this is the ideal output here in dashed. And after error mitigating with our uh, method, you get these uh, blue data points, which up to statistical errors reproduce the ideal result. Of course, if you want uh, smaller errors, no problem. You just have to pay in QPU time, and you need to decide if it's worth it. What we guarantee is basically the uh, state of the art, as far as we know, trade-off between uh, circuit volume, errors, and uh, QPU time. By, by errors, I mean two qubit gate infidelity and statistical errors that you want. Uh, OK. so. A fun fact that we learned is that already this uh, circuit is with a volume uh, 480 in these units is uh, larger than any unbiased experiment, uh, error mitigation experiments we're aware of. And it's a simple experiment on uh, four qubits. What makes it a uh, large volume is the depth. Um, we, today we've uh, done a bunch of experiments which are larger. And I want to stress that this is on a, kind, on a today standard machine. Okay? There are no like, uh, uh, un uncommonly uh, low error rates or anything else. Uh, so this is a more interesting example. Here, again, a trotterization of this Ising Hamiltonian. We work with a, a heavyweight uh, operator sensitive to essentially all of the noise in the circuit. And you see there is an interesting dynamics to reproduce. Uh, the ideal trotter circuit is this uh, black, dash, black uh, solid line, which uh, uh, follows the ideal dynamics reasonably well. The blue uh, points are what you get after using uh, Kedmer's error mitigation uh, protocol. And the red points are what you get uh, without it, OK? Just using some uh, simple, standard uh, Pauli twirling. Uh, as you see, the signal again decays as expected. So again, we get this uh, unbiased uh, output up to statistical error bars. And this experiment uh, is uh, slightly smaller than the previous experiment, even though it's on more qubits. Uh, it, it took us about 40 minutes of QPU time. This is taking into account all of the QPU time, including everything, not neglecting anything, wall time. Like, send, this is the job time. And if we would uh, compare this to an unbiased error mitigation uh, method, uh, PEC, which we've heard about uh, today in a few talks, this would take over a year. Okay? So uh, what uh, brings you these um, uh, significant uh, uh, differences? It's basically the fact that error mitigation is exponential. So it's theoretically known, theoretically proven. Error mitigation scales exponentially with uh, the total infidelity in your circuit. So this is the infidelity per two qubit gate. And this volume is the number of two qubit gates. And what matters is this number here. It's crucial because everything is exponential. So if you double it, uh, the time explodes. If you half it, the time shrinks significantly, and so on. So order one factors here are crucial. And what our job over the past ones is to basically carve away at this uh, prefactor. And what you see here is basically extrapolating uh, experimental data to see how the exponential looks like. And you see, um, you see where these uh, differences come from. So once you go to large volumes, you get uh, these uh, differences between uh, what would take us about an hour and would take uh, existing method uh, more than a year, okay, making it infeasible. Um, so where does this go if we try to kind of extrapolate uh, towards the future, looking at uh, what already happened? Uh, definitely risky business, but we're trying. So this is uh, data we've extracted uh, for uh, IBM uh, infidelities, two qubit gate infidelities for IBM machines as a function of their uh, launch date. And uh, you see that this follows a nice uh, exponential curve, at least from the data that we have. So this is a kind of Moore's law for uh, IBM's processors. And we can, uh, using these uh, infidelities and our current error mitigation method, not including any advances uh, that will definitely come into play uh, as a function of time, we just extrapolate to what's the uh, circuit volumes that we can handle in reasonable times. Okay, and what we can see is that um, today we can handle uh, with kind of uh, um, standard IBM machines, we can handle like hundreds of gates, as I've shown you. If you take the state-of-the-art machine, we will be able to handle thousands of gates. And if you extrapolate to the future, we essentially, uh, by the middle of next year, we will get to uh, this 100 by 100 uh, volume challenge that IBM posed, uh, this volume of 10 to the 4. 
Uh, will we see any practical? Okay, so what this gives you is basically ideal noise-free uh, output from circuits at this, these, uh, this volume, of course, depending on hardware uh, development. Will we see practical advantage there? I don't think anyone uh, knows, but uh, we will definitely see uh, advantage in a very particular task of uh, simulating quantum circuits, okay? So if you just want to run a circuit with no errors and extract the output, you will have to abandon at this point your uh, favorite uh, state vector simulator, uh, tensor network, whatever, and you would, uh, the best option, uh, we believe, would be just a, a good quantum processor and a good error mitigation uh, software. And together, these will give you uh, ideal outputs. Uh, again, you need this guarantee uh, that it's unbiased. Otherwise, uh, it's hard to know uh, what to do with the results. And once this happens, once this milestone is reached, we basically go to uh, tr uh, transform to basically in this field to developing quantum algorithms in this environment of a quantum processor along with uh, an error mitigation wrapped around it. Uh, and we find this uh, to be an exciting uh, transition. And if you find this interesting, uh, come look us up during the week or after this talk and uh, let's discuss this.